Representative Fincham. Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Good to meet Dr. You. Paul, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, the first um, question here I, I have for uh, the representative here, but Dr. Paul, feel free to, uh, you know, add in whatever, whatever you have. Um, what inspired you to propose a bill to make precious metals an option for legal tender? Well, actually, precious metals are already an option for legal tender. In fact, I'm a constitutional scholar, and in our Constitution, it is very clear that the federal government reserves the right to mint precious metal coins, gold and silver, to be used for exchange for commerce. Now, what inspired, I think your, the question is, what inspired this bill that we're talking about, HB 2014, is the idea, the notion that somehow paper and precious metal, we'll just use the gold coin for example, a one ounce gold coin, that, that when the paper, it takes more paper to buy that coin from one day to the next, that that coin somehow gained value. No, the issue is, and, and I was I had some very good coaching from some economists that are in the room, that that is actually a reduction in value of the paper. That's why it takes more, you know, you buy it today for a thousand bucks and tomorrow fifteen hundred, that paper lost five hundred dollars in value. That's why it takes more of them to buy the same thing. And we've been teaching people the entire opposite of that for years. Absolutely. Now in, in forty eight years the, the, the depreciation of the dollar, um, has has occurred. So, do you agree with the representative? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, since seventy one. It's down ninety five percent or even more in purchasing power because uh, governments always want to print money, and that's why they hate gold. And uh, gold and silver are, are legal tender in their money because the Constitution said. But that but the Constitution says it because gold and silver became money in a natural way, even in prehistoric times, as long as they have recorded history. A gold, gold has been money, and uh, because it's it's natural. Matter of fact, uh, in the Austrian school, they say if 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 it isn't developed in the marketplace, it's really not going to work very well. You can't take pieces of paper and all of a sudden people want to want it, and they usually want things. And a good example of what happens is when an economic system breaks down after a war or something, they they try to restore some trading. You know, going from pure bartering to having <laughs> something as an exchange and of course they've used tobacco they've used cigarettes and they use different things as a temporary issue but everybody saw those things stuff that had some value to it but historically gold is money because uh, it's been accepted by the people and it uh, fulfills some of the requirements of money and uh, people have to want it and use it it has to be exchangeable and you, you, you know uh, divisible and these sorts of things that makes it convenient uh, and that's why it's money um, and of course when uh, Bernanke denied to me that gold gold was money. I said, how can you change 6,000 years of history? I said, you might say that. It's not money because I say so. But history has shown, and the founders understood it, so they just put it in the law because they had this very bad experience with the continental dollar. Because, uh, you know, out of, quote, necessity, they realized the temptation of governments just to print money out of thin air. And so that's why it ended up in the Constitution to make a prohibition. And the uh, Congress could coin the money, and that was their responsibility to maintain the, the value of that currency. And then there were some prohibitions to the state that uh, you had to use gold and silver as money. So they protect everything that you're doing. They, you, you don't have to pass a law. You shouldn't have to, but that's what you're working for. Just say that gold and silver is legal tender. Nature tells us that. Natural history tells us that. The Constitution tells us that. But still, you have to find out enough people to agree with us on it. How many bills like this have you actually p proposed um, in this time since he spent almost 30 years to do this? How, you've been in the office for how many years? That's a great question. So I'm in my, the beginning of my second term. So I've been in office now for two years and Two months. Okay. <laughs> um, getting back to your question, to, though, before I go on to other bills. Sure. You talked about backstopping with oil. You're not backstopping this. You're backstopping the paper. 
The honest money, and I'm a real estate agent, okay? Right. So I, I view metal. This is highly refined dirt. Well, you can't burn that in a car. Well, it's highly cigarette. refined dirt. This was originally ore. It was rock, which but means it was real away, estate. Right? Exactly. It was real estate. It was real, where this is fiat, not real. Okay. okay? And classic definition. Um, when it comes to, gosh, this is my third bill. The first two bills um, sought to do nothing more than have the state of Arizona acknowledge that legal tender money, honest money, gold and silver, is minted by the U.S. government. We, we were simply going to acknowledge Article 10 of the Constitution that said the U.S. Mint prints money. That was all we were going to do. And that was like a, a two-sentence bill, if I recall. No, no, it was a short bill. More than that, because you do have some tax things that, that we had to, to okay. address. But again, it goes to this notion of exchange versus purchase. You don't purchase one kind of money with another kind of money. That's an exchange, and it should not trigger a taxable event. So Congress and the IRS figured out, hey, if we can buffalo people into believing that today it's worth this, but tomorrow it's worth this, oh, and that difference, that's a gain. Well, mathematically, it might be a gain when you just try to okay. do the But the problem is it's not a gain. It's actually a loss. And this is where the mechanics of money and the mechanics of government collide. Okay. The government wants to have, make sure that they get every last penny out of every last corner of your life in the form of a tax. In Arizona, I believe we have either 92, 98 individual taxes that people pay every single day. When they buy a product, a service, uh, if they're on the roads, if they've got a car, if they're going grocery shopping, if they have income, we are taxing everything in order for the state to expand. That's why I get very squeamish about these bureaucracies that, well, we're just gonna add a couple of people here and a couple of people there. Well, next thing you know, we now have an adult daycare system that is essentially doing what? Are they delivering a service? I think the best question, the best measure of the value of a service is would people notice if you stop doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, there are a lot of things the state does that I don't think we need to be doing. And, and you, you brought up how they, they back the dollar with tobacco. Um, and, and it, you know, I know when I was growing up, they backed it with oil. It, do they seem to try to back money with uh, goods that uh, you can use up that go away at some point? Well, like, when it's like, primitive, yes, they have to do it, something that you can use. Uh, but, you know, in a more uh, civilized society, in a modern society, they have accepted the idea that, uh, you know, a, a a uh, currency like a, a gold standard you can use it and you can use uh, people keep thinking well you can't do that because you have to carry bags of gold around mm -hmm. but you have to have something better than this you have to have a certificate and you, people have to trust it this is certified as either redeemable in gold and silver then you can use this and then th then it can work but uh, they want uh, they don't want to do it if everybody if you dropped a hundred people on an island they had to survive together and they said well the first thing we need is a central bank to print the money. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. People say, well, who's, you're crazy, aren't you? But if somebody went out there and picked some fruit and planted some crops and caught some fish, there would be some value and there'd be something that they would say, what if, what if there were a few tools left over that would have tremendous value to it? So uh, almost anything could serve depending on the condition. But if you want an advanced uh, economic system, you want uh, a uh, currency, money that you can trust and trust the government and that's where the problem gets into as soon as things come up short like civil war they just suspend the gold standard war times they they do it uh and uh, so that way they can pay for the the yeah. war sure because they can't the people won't support the welfare warfare state the only way they can support this runaway government is to lie to the people that uh, oh this really doesn't cost anything and deficits don't matter it's and it's this garbage that they've been hearing for a hundred years but the reason i'm optimistic is, is it's going to end uh, it doesn't work and most of the time it ends badly and i think why there's so much turmoil in the markets up and down and what's going on in washington and elections and all is people aren't quite recognizing the significance of the end of a philosophy that just doesn't work to me it says 
as almost as equivalent to the end of communism, which was a big event. You know, communism boom, just <laughs> fell apart and we didn't have to have a nuclear war. Sure. But I think the last year, 100 years of progressivism and Keynesianism and inflationism and paper money, well, that's all coming to an end. So back to your original question, uh, instead of let's shift gears from gold to silver. Okay. The U.S. Mint, when they minted this in 1883, it's Morgan silver dollar. It was worth one of these. Well, not one of these. This is a Federal Reserve note, but it was worth a silver certificate. If this wasn't money, then why was this redeemable for this? And that's what got my attention. And that would, and, and basically, when it was a silver certificate, it was backed up by the the metal. That's right. It and, was and, a promise to pay. And, it was a promise to pay. Promise to exchange that's where the whole exchange versus buy thing sorry senator farley i'm not buying your argument we exchange one for another now the fact that this is now worth on the open market oh anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks depending upon condition that's where he was trying to say that well condition numismatic value no at the end of the day i exchanged this for a 20 dollar bill with somebody else Anything that goes above that, if it's worth $35 today, this didn't gain value. It's still worth 20 bucks to me. What happened is there's $15 in inflation that happened since the time I acquired this. And I should not be taxed on that. There's this notion of an unjust gain. Really? That's when money's owned by the government and lent to the people. That's not our system. Our system right. is we own the money and we willingly, sometimes, give it to the government to do certain things. And you're pointing out an unjust tax. Basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're going to tax me $15, the, tax so, me on the $15 difference between these two from when I acquired it to when I want to exchange it back to these. So there is an That's unjust That's inflation. Game. That's a law. It's just, it's just reversed. It's the other way around. It was an unjust tax. Exactly. Okay. exactly. So the more they print, the more taxes they retrieve, right. you know, because there's more paper money. And currently, it's not legal to use anything other than Federal Reserve notes in the United States, uh, such as uh, Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency to settle debts, not even between private parties. Uh, do you see the possibility of our Congress interfering negatively? negatively, like a state's rights conflict, uh, with having the state of Arizona the freedom of using competitive legal tender worth of value in itself, even if the legislation is supported by the people of Arizona? Um, I'll, I'll give you my brief comment on that, and then Dr. Paul uh, can weigh in. Okay. It's already happening. People barter every day. If I were to go down to Clifton and offer two silver pieces for a 65 pound bale of, of alfalfa hay, I am guaranteed that somebody would accept that silver in lieu of 35 greenbacks. It's already happening. Now that happens to be US Mint stuff, but what we have to understand is that people will find a way to trade, it's barter. They'll find a way to trade one thing for another, and I think Dr. Paul was talking about that earlier that since time people have figured this out and they didn't need to have a government to tell them how to do it. Am I That's sort of right. close and, to right? Uh, and, and they will go to bartering when, when conditions break down. I, I sort of sense that part of your question was, will uh, we ever t be able to take what Arizona says and send it in and pay our income tax? And then they're only going to accept what they define as money in Federal Reserve. Matter of fact, it's ironic that there are some, uh, I don't think you can walk into the IRS office with Federal Reserve notes. It says it's legal tender for all debts, private and public, and they won't even take the Federal Reserve notes. You got to be in a computer. So they do what they want, and uh, if there's any hint, <clears throat> so they're not going to hit, all of a sudden uh, take bitcoins as payment of debts. So even though it could be used in the private sector, and that's what's really healthy, is uh, <clears throat> ultimately the market uh, you know, takes care of itself. Oh. Um, since the... Uh since Dr. Paul has been a consistent critic of the U.S. fiscal policies in the Federal Reserve System uh, throughout his political career, um, Representative uh, Fincham, are you uh, honored that the former congressman who earned the nickname 
Dr. No for voting no on so many bills he deemed unconstitutional uh, came and spoke and, and is uh, actually, you know, basically voting yes as a private citizen here today. You got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> <laughs> that question, uh, I can, I can, as if I were to think of the top 10 days of my life, <laughs> the days my two kids were born, the day I was married, uh, the day that I took Jesus as my savior, and somewhere in that other 10, that other five, today is going to be really high up on the list. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say that Dr. Paul's a savior, but I, I do think that he has a message that uh, if this nation is going to be saved uh, when it comes to fiscal policy, if, if we're going to protect the interests of not, our, not just ourselves, but our posterity, yes, from the preamble of the Constitution, we are stewards of something that has been given to us that has never existed in the history of the world. And if we don't do that properly, our children will suffer the consequences. Care to comment, sir? I don't have a whole lot to say. You, you always get a lot of flack for oh, being philosophical. Doctor, you know, I'm the doctor, no. Uh, sometimes it's positive, negative, why you want to be a negative guy, but I think you clarified that. I think saying no to bad stuff is okay. Yes. But my, my wife uh, generally resented the, this doctor no stuff. Staff always loved it and supporters <laughs> like it. But my wife said, nah, it just doesn't sound so good. So she said, well, maybe they just don't have the spelling right. Maybe it starts with a K. <laughs> well, I think I, <laughs> I, I think it, it definitely uh, protests to a golden stamp when you do actually you know, agree with something and, and support it. Absolutely. I received a call several weeks ago from a gentleman, and, uh, I, and frankly, I don't have his name. He's not the gentleman that I've been talking to, but as I understand, he's on the staff for uh, Campaign for Liberty. And he said, hey, we've caught wind of your bill, and Dr. Paul has taken some pretty serious interest in it, and he would like to come advocate for your bill. Would that be all right with you? You've got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> so uh, this was about three, I want to say about three weeks ago. And uh, as soon as I said yes, the wheels were put into motion. And uh, I, they said, well, if, if we can manage it in his schedule, we'll see what we can do. But he really likes your bill. He likes the content. He likes the direction it's going. And I was, uh, I got to tell you, it was I was very flattered, very flattered and to have somebody of this stature uh, to be standing beside him and testi testifying on a bill like this. Uh, in the form that we were in, it, it, just beyond, it, this is almost surreal to me. Your win today, you uh, got the bill passed through the House Senate. Is there anything else that, that needs any other processes that it needs to go through at this point? Well, I think uh, Dr. Paul's uh, testimony was instrumental in making sure that we had the votes that we needed to have to get it passed out. Uh, I'm disappointed to see that uh, it was a party line vote, and really, this is the collision uh, again of two ideologies: one that the government owns the money, and the other that the people do. Uh, the next step is to go to the rules committee, uh, because we know that it's already been passed constitutional muster in the House. We suspect that the rules committee in the Senate will pass it very quickly. It goes to the floor. Um, there are. We have concerns about whether or not we've got all the votes we need. We'd love to see this be a bipartisan move. Uh, that protects people's income, that protects people's uh, retirements, uh, because retirement is not a Republican or Democratic issue. That's an every person issue. Okay. And if we're not protecting what people are investing in today, whether they are converting, exchanging dollars for gold or exchanging dollars for something else, a house, those things, when, when people go to retire, if we don't have the right monetary policy in place, the government's taking their retirement. Well, and, I was and very surprised to see the Democrats vote against. Them. We saw how the the housing boom took all the value from the house and made a lot of houses worthless. We see that in Detroit, uh, where you can buy a house for dirt cheap, and and uh, so it, it it is a lousy investment. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You, you're welcome. One it's of my top here. days. Right. I'll Thank tell you. you.